when we think of a typical GoPro video, words like exciting, sports, extreme and of course action often come to mind. And that's what the GoPro commercial videos look like, or the videos that GoPro itself posts on YouTube. And often a sing-along take is enough. It doesn't even need particularly exciting music, because when you ski down a mountain peak in deep snow, or throw yourself off a cliff with a wingsuit, or ride a mountain bike down a steep trail, it looks cool and exciting. But if you don't do all that, then you can quickly run the risk that your videos won't look the way you imagined, that they might not be really exciting, but rather might seem a bit boring. And that's what we want to change today. help of five tips, I want to show you today how you can create more exciting GoPro videos, no matter if you want to create your videos for YouTube, Instagram or just for yourself. And I want to start today with what's actually the last step in the process, because this step is the really crucial one, the edit. If the actual video footage isn't extremely exciting on its own, then you should try to produce something exciting and varied from the existing footage. It doesn't really matter what editing program you use. For what we are discussing today, a very simple software is sufficient. I use Final Cut Pro myself, but for a long time I produced my videos with iMovie, which is the free editing software on the Mac. And that worked well for me for a very long time. As far as editing goes, I want to share a few important principles with you today. First, I would recommend that you keep the shots in your project short. No one is interested in seeing the same shot for minutes on end, especially if there isn't something new happening all the time. So better put short clips together. A few seconds per clip is usually enough. Less really is often more here. And you should know that you will keep your clips short later on when you shoot them. In the beginning I often took very long clips. Not only did that use up a lot of memory, but I didn't feel like watching the long clips myself. I found it exhausting to edit them. So you could also say, shoot for the edit. So while you're shooting, think about how you want to edit your project later. In this context, of course, it must also be said that today we have become accustomed to an incredible amount of stimuli. We watch videos or photos all the time and get bored extremely quickly. We are quickly distracted and if something new and interesting doesn't happen right away, we click away. For all these reasons, I can't quite understand why the topic of overheating is always so heavily discussed in connection with action cameras. In the rarest of cases, I now take shots that are longer than one minute. But well, I also live in the mountains and heat is usually not a problem here. Of course, it makes sense if you manage to put together a coherent story from the individual short clips. By that, I don't mean a story in the real sense, but more a logical sequence. Let's say you're making a video of skiing. You might start with a short panorama shot, then show a short clip of you putting on your skis, starting your descent and so on. But you'll only be able to achieve all of this if you've taken shots of several different situations that you can logically put together afterwards. And that's why I recommend that you plan your shots. Think beforehand about what kind of shots you might need, what different shots would go well together. For example, what you might always need is what's called an establishing shot which is a shot where you show the environment, where you are or what the video is about. Just like an establishing shot, it's always a good idea to take a few close-ups as well. In my case here, for example, of the skis. Such shots are often called B-roll. They make little sense on their own, but they fit very well into a varied edit. Again, it's enough to show two or three seconds of each shot. It's these details that make the difference and then add variety to your video. But one thing I can assure you, if you don't plan the shot from the beginning, you won't take them. Unfortunately, this has happened to me all too often. While I was making minute-long videos of the same runs over and over again, I was then missing such b-roll shots. But you'll need them for a varied edit, so while you can definitely limit yourself in the length of your shots, you should take as many different and varied shots as possible. And that actually brings us to my next tip. Try to include as many different clips as possible in your project. I just mounted my first GoPro on my helmet and then took more or less the same shots over and over again. Nobody wants to watch that, neither do I of course. You lose the enthusiasm for your recordings relatively quickly. It is clear that the clips should fit together when edited. GoPro offers you an endless number of mounts and accessories. For example, use chest mounts, poles or handlebar mounts and then put the different clips together. With the different mounts, you can achieve different perspectives. Shoot from below, from above, from behind. Similar to before, even if the individual clip may not be exciting on its own, it can be a great asset in the edit. In the video description you will find several links to different mounts and accessories. 
If you are interested in skiing, I made a video about the best mounts for skiing some time ago. In it you can see the effect of the different mounts and which kind of shots you can take with each of them. Apart from the different perspective and mounts, there are other ways to add variety. Two very important ones are camera movements and slow motion. Camera movements not only add variety, they also add dynamics and meaning to the shot. For example, a classic dolly forward introduces the action. A backward movement concludes a section of the action. With a sideways movement, you can add depth to the shot. For example, if there are objects in the foreground. No matter what the camera movement is, especially in the case of a GoPro, which provides that immersive look with its extremely wide angle, the static position is usually the most boring one. I have already made a video on GoPro camera movements as well. I'll link you all the videos I mentioned in the description. For more variety, you can also use slow motion. I don't mean that you should create the whole video in slow motion, but individual scenes or highlights get a very special effect if you include them in slow motion. And the GoPro is really great when it comes to slow motion shots. On the Hero 10, for example, the 4K 120 mode is one of my favorite features. The quality is almost indistinguishable from shooting in 4K 30 or 24, and the slow motion shots just look spectacular. It looks especially good when you combine the slow motion recording with the right music or the beat of the music. And that brings us to the next point, music and possibly sound effects. If you think of the short clip in the intro or even most GoPro commercials, these shots would hardly make an impact without the right song. The right music will ultimately make all the difference. So it's not only important that you edit your project to the music, that is to the beat, but of course it's also important that you choose a piece of music that conveys the mood that fits your footage. Especially if you want to publish your videos on YouTube for example, you might want to think about a music licensing service. You can of course use music with a Creative Commons license. This worked well for me for a long time, but at some point I encountered certain limits. The selection of free good music is very limited and I was constantly using the same songs. Today I use the music service audio and personally I am especially satisfied with the quality of the songs. However, this video is not sponsored by audio and you can of course find very good music from other providers. Audio has for me, apart from the quality of the songs, the advantage that there are always excellent offers and they also have a lifetime license. For the Emma Pro license, there is a fantastic deal at the moment. The Pro license includes not only music, but also sound effects and is universal. The music can therefore be used for all commercial purposes. If you want to have a look or better said, listen to it, you will find the link in the video description. Well, I think that if you take these five tips to heart, you will produce very cool GoPro videos. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback. There will be more GoPro tutorials to come. So stay tuned and see you next time.